Welcome back everybody. This is chapter 5 on electric, electronic structure and the periodic trends. So this first section we're going to be looking at electromagnetic radiation. And an electromagnetic radiation is essentially energy that's transferring through say space or usually through space because something is different. If you were to have radiation of sound you need to have a medium. So like if you were to strike a hammer on, a, on an anvil and you could hear that, something has to be vibrating and the medium in between you and that source has to be vibrating. So the steel would vibrate, the hammer would vibrate, it would create um, an oscillation in the air, the air then would move all the way into your ears and then you would pick up that, that vibration. So that radiation is energy radiating out from where it vibrated at the beginning. Electromagnetic radiation is a little bit different because it doesn't need a medium. It doesn't have to have something to vibrate in. So it's not like water sloshing around in the swimming pool, or it's not like a spring vibrating or a guitar string vibrating back and forth and making an oscillation. Instead, electromagnetic radiation is kind of weird. It has two different uh, media essentially built into it, electromagnetic. So you're going to have an electric field. An electric field is going to be generating, and the medium that it is moving in is a magnetic field. And at the same time, you're going to have a magnetic field that is using electricity as its medium. And this sounds absolutely ridiculous, but what's going to happen is you're going to have some kind of a vibration. So you're going to have an oscillation back and forth, and it's going to be in two, two dimensions. So let's say you can have elect, an electric field back and forth, going from positive to negative, back and forth, and it's riding along in, this is at a 90 degree, I don't know how to draw very well, sorry. So this is, say, on the, on the y-axis, the up-down axis. So this is the y, and then this is the x-axis. So this would be sideways. So what's happening is you've got two media, at the same time, one riding in the other. For that reason, it can go in, in dead space. You, you can have radiation in the middle of nothing, like between the sun and the earth. There is no molecules, there's nothing to vibrate. It's dead, empty space. So, but you can have radiation of light, radiation of heat, radiation of gamma rays, radiation of radio waves. All of these are different forms of electromagnetic radiation. So it's energy that travels as waves through space in its own medium, okay? So it doesn't need something to disturb like sound. If you were to put, uh, if you were to put a ringing bell inside, a, inside a, a glass dome and evacuate all the air out from under that dome, you would see the bell ringing, but you couldn't hear it because what you hear is the disturbance in the air. And if there's no air to disturb, then that sound is not being made. You can see it, but you cannot hear it. Um, it's different with uh, electromagnetic radiation. Now, all we want to th think of as light, the speed of light. The speed of light is three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. Could you put that in your notes, please, and in your brain? Three times 10 to the eight meters per second. That's how fast, so remember, a, a meter is a little over three feet. Uh, so three with eight zeros, that many meters per second. That's how fast light's traveling. And all radiation, all electromagnetic radiation is the same speed. So whether it's radio waves or it's gamma waves or it's infrared or if it's ultraviolet or microwaves or whatever it is, um, they're all the same speed because it's electromagnetic radiation. So we're gonna, we're gonna call that speed of light is a lowercase c. And we're going to say that it is the product of the wavelength, okay, this is lambda, a Greek letter L, uh, times nu. And nu, it looks like a V there, but that is a Greek letter N for nu. So you're going to have speed of light, uh, speed of electromagnetic radiation, okay, whether it's light or other thing, equals the wavelength times the frequency. How fast is it going? Okay, so the wavelength, let's say you want to find out the speed of a train. OK, 
okay, and I knew the length of every car, if I knew how many cars were moving by me in a minute, then I could, I could multiply that frequency, 12 cars per minute, times the length of every car, if I knew how long that train car was, I could estimate the speed of that train. So it's the wavelength times the frequency, lambda nu. Please write that down. And pause the video anytime that you need to take notes. Um, that's how to do it. So lambda is a distance of a wave. Okay, so let's say again I have an oscillation. And let's say I have, this could be a guitar string, and so it's vibrating on one side, then it vibrates on the other side, then it vibrates back on the other side. It's going back and forth and back and forth. So let's say it starts from where it is, it goes over to the right to a maximum, that's called an amplitude. It comes back to where it used to live, right there in the middle where the string usually sits. And then it has too much momentum, so it, keep, it goes in the other direction, goes to the left, and then it comes back to where it belongs, okay? So it goes this way, and then it comes back, and then it goes this way, and then it comes back, and that's an oscillating string. Well, I can graph that as a sine wave, kind of goes up, and then down and then up. So one wavelength, okay, um, one wavelength, how do I change the thing? One wavelength would be from up and down and up, okay, because then it would just repeat itself up and down and up, up and down and up, or if you want to think of a wavelength as being different, a wavelength would be from here, from up all the way down back to up again. So it's from one point to the corresponding point on the, on the next wave. That is one wavelength. And this is, this is measured to be lambda. Lambda, okay? I make a lambda by making a northwest to southeast line and then kind of an upside down Y. That's a lambda. These are expressed in meters. How many meters? So if you want to think of meters as, remember, it's about three feet a little more. Uh, you could have a, a radio wave that is as long as a football field. That's a very long wave. Or you could have a gamma radiation where there would be many, many thousands within, within an inch. So it depends upon um, how little it is. And usually the smaller it is, the more energy it has. Not usually, always. Frequency, is new, is in hertz. And a hertz is a cycle every second. So remember the guitar string, okay, it starts off here, then it moves to this side, and then it moves back, and then it moves to this side, then it moves back, okay. One cycle would be from wherever you want to measure back to that same place. So if you wanted to measure from here, okay, then it would have to go all the way back to here. That would be one wavelength, okay. So it's a cycle, a cycle, Per second. Now, a cycle is not a unit. It's simply just, it's a unitless measure. It simply means start somewhere and then come back to that same place. So if you're pushing a kid on the swing, wherever you push, they go away from you and then they come back to you, then you push again. You are pushing at one cycle, okay? However long it takes you to push, that's at one cycle. So a cycle is not really anything, which means it's a nothing over a second. Okay, and this unit is called a hertz, okay, H-E-R-T-Z. One cycle per second is a hertz. So you measure radio uh, frequencies in hertz. You measure um, anything that's going to vibrate uh, with electromagnetic radiation, say gamma rays for, for if you uh, go to a cancer treatment center or whatever, that's in hertz. Um, the visible light that you see, that's in hertz. Okay, so you'll, you'll either measure it in uh, meters for how long the wavelength is or how many, what's the frequency of that light, and that would be in hertz. So say a hertz could be one cycle per second. A megahertz would be a million hertz. So like, let's say a um, radio station would measure, would measure theirs in megahertz. And then they go up, giga, tera, whatever. So a hertz is a cycle per second. So if you were to have, okay, one meter... Okay, that would be your wavelength, and then 
one nothing over a second, what is the speed of light measured in? Well, it's measured in meters per second. So speed of light is a speed in a distance divided by a time, just like you would measure your car. So wavelength and frequency are inverses of each other. Remember, anything on the same side of the equal sign is going to be inverse. As one goes up, the other goes down. So light, for instance, is a, a mixture of all the different wavelengths of colors. So they, they all have different frequencies with different wavelengths. So the long, low energy, red, okay, and then you have the short wavelengths, uh, for blue. So the, the shorter the wavelength, the higher the energy. So blue hot is actually hotter than red hot. Bet you didn't know that. So since it's re inverse, as one goes up, the other comes down. So for instance, if the train cars get longer, fewer, fewer will pass uh, by you in a minute. Okay. So as one goes up, now if the speed of the train is the same and the cars are longer, then only 10 will go by or 9 will go by uh, because it takes longer for that long car to pass. So the longer the wavelength, the shorter the, um, the frequency. So the electromagnetic spectrum is different, okay? So you can start down here uh, with radio waves. That's the lowest, longest, um, less energetic waves. And then we have microwaves. Okay. For instance, radio stations will go up to a certain point. After that, they used to be television, television stations. Well, television now is all digital, so we don't have TV stations broadcasting in those ranges, so they gave it to the microwave towers, and your cell phone is based on a microwave tower. So everything after radio, uh, radio waves is then in uh, microwaves, and your cell phone works that way. Anything higher than microwaves, and remember, microwave can energize water. That's how you can heat your coffee in the microwave oven. Anything higher than that is heat. So infrared is lower than red, and red uh, is referring to the light red. Okay. Anything lower than that is infrared, so lower than light is infrared. Higher than light is ultraviolet, UV. UV gives you the sunburn or a suntan. There's a UVA. UVB, UVC, okay, so UVA will give you a tan, UVB and C is dangerous for your skin, can cause skin cancers. Anything higher than that is x-rays, and they will pierce even your skin, but they will be stopped by your bones. That's why you can take a picture of a broken bone with an x-ray, and anything uh, higher energy than that is gamma, and gamma would be so high that it would pass even through a bone. It would almost need to be stopped by lead. So this is a learning check. I hope your mom has some candy. If you get it right, you can get some candy. If blue light, which is more energetic than red, remember blue hot, blue hot is hotter than red hot, has 450 nanometers. That remember the nanometers is its lambda. And so here is its lambda. 450 nanometers is the lambda. And it has a higher energy Okay, so this is, this is, blue hot is hotter than red hot, so this has a high frequency, okay? That means this would be a lower frequency. What do you know about lambda of red light? Is, is it going to be a bigger number or a smaller number? Okay, as you get more energy, is the wavelength going to get smaller or is it going to get bigger? Okay, that's... Time for you to answer. Let's see. Okay. The wavelength of red is greater than blue, which means that the wavelength of red is greater than 450. So the higher the, the higher the wavelength, the lower the frequency. The lower the frequency, the higher the wavelength that works that way. Here's number two. If the frequency of blue light is 6.3 times 10 to the 14 hertz, so that's its frequency, what is, what is its frequency in kilohertz? Okay, remember kilohertz is a thousand of them. Okay, so if I have if it's a thousand times bigger, my number needs to be a thousand times smaller. How do I do that? That's real easy when you have these. This is amazingly easy. All you're going to do is drop this down three. 
because remember three did three zeros is a thousand. So if it's a thousand times bigger, my number has to be a thousand times smaller. If it's a million times bigger, okay, then it would be a million times smaller. Okay, so if it goes up six, uh, six decimals, then my number goes down six numbers. If it goes up three decimals, my number goes down three. Okay, that's how it works. Right, so you would simply divide it out. You're dividing by 1,000, reduces to 11. You would read, so you want to cancel hertz. It's dividing by six, that's, that's a million. So it would be 10 to the eight hertz. And here's the last one. Which of the following has the shortest wavelength? Microwaves, blue light, or ultraviolet light? Which of the following has lowest energy? Red, blue, green. Which of the following has the highest frequency? Radio, infrared, x-rays. Pick at least one of these and try to answer in your head, and I'll show you the answer. The shortest wavelength of the three was ultraviolet. The longest or the lowest energy of the colors is red, and the highest fre frequency other than gamma is x-rays. All right, I hope that helps you. Please take notes on this and uh, submit that into the assignment.